Greetings from Chicago, everyone, and thank you for joining us for an overview of the upcoming IEG webinar, Creating Effective Sponsorship Proposals. I'm William Chips, Senior Editor with IEG Sponsorship Report. Now, for every organization that is trying to find sponsors, from NASCAR and the NFL down to local arts groups and causes and, and really everything in between, the proposal is the most critically important but the most misunderstood communication between the property, that's you, and your potential sponsors. Now, I say it's the most misunderstood based on the number of proposals that we see that are so completely off the mark. They just don't accomplish what they need to in order to move a company toward being interested in a sponsorship. Now, right off the bat, we need to define what we mean by proposals because, and this is a very critical point that often gets overlooked, there are two different types of sponsorship proposals. So here we have the proposal brief. Now the proposal brief is going to give the prospect a thumbnail sketch of the property as well as the sponsorship opportunity. Now it's short and sweet and really needs to deliver just enough information so that the prospect will have a top line, top line understanding of the who, what, when, where, and really most importantly, the why of the sponsorship opportunity. Now the goal of the proposal brief is to share just enough information so the prospect can say, this sounds interesting, yes, I would like to hear more. So it's all about whetting their appetite. That's really the goal here. Now it qualifies this prospect as someone who is worth devoting the time and energy to sitting down with and meeting and really taking the conversation further. Now the second proposal type is the document that is used to follow up after the initial meeting. So this is a multi-page document that includes a cover letter and really all of your supporting information. So this document obviously goes into much more depth. It's much deeper than the proposal brief, uh, which is essentially just that. It's just a brief. Now, this document is used after the first contact has been made and is designed to provide all of the details the prospect needs in order to make an informed decision and gain internal buy-in. So this is really a customized, tailored document that, that really demonstrates how a partnership will help the prospect obtain its specific marketing objective, whatever that might be. Now, when crafting a proposal, you really need to keep in mind what successful proposals are and really, just as importantly, what they are not. Now, the overriding principle is that your proposal must illustrate why a prospect should become a sponsor. Now, when you think about it, yes, that does sound easy enough, but it, it really means that proposals must do some things and not do others. So I'd like to quickly go over the do's and don'ts that should really guide you in drafting your communications with sponsors. Now, uh, anytime you put a proposal together, you should really go back and, and review it against this list. Uh, so really ask yourself the question, does your proposal accomplish, accomplish each of these criteria? So let's break that down. Uh, first off, you have to ask yourself the question, does your proposal capture the reader's attention? Sponsors, depending on the size of their companies, can receive hundreds of proposals a month. Uh, an example there would be the multicultural marketing director at Pepsi, and, and you know, keep in mind that he oversees multicultural-related sponsorships, not sports and entertainment. Uh, this person receives 20 proposals a day. That's 100 proposals a week. So the simple fact is that you really have just a few quick seconds to hit prospects with something that will really make your property stand out from the pack. So what that means is not making the mistake that most properties make, and that is sending too much information. Sponsors don't want, they don't need, and don't have the time to read every press clip, uh, see every ad, uh, digest the history of your organization, or, or scan the bios of your board of directors. So what you need to do is keep it short, sweet, and simple. Now, deliver only the most important uh, information. Uh, the bigger the proposal or the bigger the, the document is, um, when you think about it, the more work it's going to take a sponsor to go through, kind of um, go through all the pages, and, and, and chances are a potential sponsor is not going to try to pick out information from 200 pages of stuff. So again, keep your proposals short and sweet. And the second point, does your proposal highlight the benefits? Now, rather than all that uh, background information, proposals have to hit sponsors over the head with what's in it for them. Very, very important. So in addition to sending too much information, this is the other mistake that properties make all too often. When you think about it, it, it's such a temptation when you're selling something to kind of lead off with how wonderful the product is. 
Um, you know, it's all well and good that you have a championship motorsports team. It's all well and good that, that you work for a charity that gives millions of dollars to fight a disease or uh, let's say you produce an award-winning event. That's great for sure. But at the end of the day, none of that really matters to your prospect, at least at this point in the proposal process. Uh, so again, stay away from talking about how great your organization is and, and really focus and really uh, boil down how a partnership with your property can, again, help them achieve their specific marketing objectives. So again, it's not about you, it's all about them. Now, another question you really need to ask yourself, is this proposal relevant? Now, certainly highlighting sponsor benefits is one way to be relevant, but at the end of the day, it really is not enough. Now, a big mistake that many sellers make is that they try to get away with providing inf information that, that just isn't tailored and customized to the prospect's needs. Now, yes, it, it certainly would be simpler and much easier to put together one document that you could send to every prospect. Um, yes, for sure, lots of properties do try to get away with doing just that. Um, but really, let me tell you, uh, realistically and, and honestly, to secure significant dollars, uh, that approach just doesn't work. Now, this one-size-fits-all approach does, just doesn't work effectively when, when, when you're securing sponsors, at least sponsors at a significant level. So again, you definitely want to stay away from the mass mailing thing. Uh, yes, it may seem like a lot of extra work to, to tailor and customize each proposal, um, but it really isn't, and again, it really is necessary. Next, have you been pro proactive in crafting the proposal? Now, this is one piece of advice that usually solicits uh, groans uh, and moans from our clients and, and other properties that we work with and we, that we talk to. And really what I mean by being proactive is that you should not just stop at just listing all of the benefits that a sponsor can get. Now, you really have to take the next step and, and actually show them what they can do with those benefits. Now, you do that by suggesting the ways they can use the sponsorship as a promotional platform. You know, really show them how the sponsorship can be leveraged or, or activated as a way to drive sales through, say, uh, ticket discounts or uh, by implementing a, a cause-related marketing program. Obviously, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, but really, the, at the end of the day, don't assume that the sponsor is going to see all of these possibilities and kind of jump to these conclusions by themselves. You know, you really have to take them by the hand and, and help them make that leap. Um, so again, you really do want to be as proactive as possible uh, and include activation in your activation ideas in your sponsorship proposals. Uh, at the end of the day, no one knows your audience better than you yourself. Uh, you as a property knows know their uh, sponsorship hot button. So again, it's really kind of on you as a sponsorship seller, as a property, uh, to kind of brainstorm uh, proactively and, and develop those activation platforms that will help that prospect uh, gain to the clutter and really engage those, those consumers and that audience. And the last point here, are your proposals specific? Now, proposals must contain as much detailed information and data as possible. Now, remember that the unfortunate reality is that most sponsors are looking for an opportunity to say no. I hate to say it, but that is the reality. Now, a proposal that does not provide specific information really gives the prospect uh, another reason to disregard it or uh, to assume that the seller is being vague because they are trying to hide something. So you certainly don't want to give them that chance. So, for example, uh, say that the sponsor will receive uh, extensive exposure. Now, what's extensive to you may not be extensive to the buyer. So, so don't stop there uh, on what, where, and, and how many. Uh, provide specifics about collateral materials, uh, publications, uh, merchandise, and, and media buys, uh, including everything from quantities, uh, circulation numbers, and, and rate card rates. Um, and outline where logos will be placed. And the last bullet point here, remember that one of the challenges of sponsorship is that it is not, it is not entirely bought and sold on numbers. Now, when a company buys advertising, it's, it's essentially a, a straight calculation of how many people will, will be reached uh, and at what cost. Uh, but sponsorship includes a number of intangible benefits, such as, say, uh, borrowed loyalty and, and imagery that's, that's really quite difficult to put a hard dollar value on. Uh, for that reason, uh, the more you can quantify those elements of sponsorship that are quantifiable, uh, such as media exposure, uh, collateral materials, uh, etc., uh, the more you are making the prospect feel more comfortable with the purchase decision. To learn more about sponsorship proposals, including a deep dive look at a pro prototype proposal brief, a full proposal, as well as must-have content, please join me for IEG's Effective Sponsorship Proposals webinar. I hope to see you there.